Hello, my name is Professor Bernard Combe from the Montpellier University in France. Today, we'll be reviewing the symposium Jack Inhibition for Metal Arthritis, a Paradigm Shift Reality, presented at Tula 2020, and co-chaired by, by me and Professor Ulf müller nadner from Germany. The symposium presentations were presented by Professor Hendrik schulz koops from Germany, Professor Peter Taylor from the UK, and Professor Thorsten Uthite also from Germany. The symposium objectives are to increase the knowledge among the attendees on how the different Jack inhibitor works, to edu educate the attendees on how to better treat their rheumatoid arthritis patients by sharing with them the latest evidence from both clinical trials and real-world data. Professor Hendrik schulz koops presented a lecture on journey to the center of the cell and their effect on RA. First of all, he discussed about JAK stat signaling pathway and uh, the selectivity of different JAK inhibitors. The JAK family members always pair in homo or heterodimers, and their pair interact on the inside of the cell with a total of seven different stat signal transducer and activator of transcription molecules. He shows on this slide uh, the stat inhibition and mainly uh, based on the JAK13 dependent cytokines. You look at the, um, the effect on different types of cells, T cells and K cells, monocyte B cells and CD8 cells. And what we can uh, summarize is that the IC50 values for any given JAK inhibitors were similar across cell types and were dose dependent. First, secondly, the data for JAK inhibitor treated subject revealed cytokine dependent similarities and differences in magnitude of STAT inhibition. The percentage of STAT inhibition for IL2, IL4, IL15, and IL21 signaling, that uh, it's driven by JAK13. And we can see on this slide that it was generally highest for tofacitinib and upadacitinib, and least for baricitinib. So now moving to so the JAK2 dependent cytokines, and uh, we can see that the percentage of stat inhibition for IL3 and GMCSF that are driven by JAK22 in monocyte were generally highest for upadacitinib and secondly less so for baricitinib and tofacitinib. The percentage of stat inhibition for GCSF and STAT3 driven by JAK2, TIC2 in monocyte, as you can see on the slide, was highest for tofacitinib and less for upadacitinib and baricitinib. So in summary, not only baricitinib, but also upadacitinib is inhibiting JAK2 dependent cytokine. So in, uh, in summary, the difference between JAK inhibitor and their effect on cytokine signaling shows that in ex vivo flow cytometry experiment, baricitinib inhibited JAK13 signaling to a lesser extent than upadacitinib and tofacitinib. Baricitinib and upadacitinib were the most potent inhibitors for GM-CSF JAK22 signaling, while upadacitinib has been reported to be selective for JAK one uh, as a JAK1 inhibitor, data in this study demonstrates that upadacitinib has also an activity against JAK2 in addition to JAK1. So the second presentation was performed by Professor Peter Taylor, who discussed about JAK inhibitors improving outcome and exceeding expectation. He first showed an important trial that is RA beam. This, this trial was the first to show that uh, a drug, paracetinib, was superior to uh, the standard of care, adalimumab, on the top of methotrexate. The trial was performed in patients with inadequate response to methotrexate. And you can see here a CR response rate on the left, and that's 28 CRP change on the right. The primary outcome was a CR20 by week 12, and you can see in red, uh, baricitinib 4 mg per day, in dark blue, adalimumab plus methotrexate, and in gray, placebo. 
Baricitinib uh, plus uh, methotrexate was superior to placebo, but also so su significantly superior by week 12 versus adalimumab. And it's the same for DAS28 change uh, until 52 weeks. The second trial that is quite similar, but has been recently uh, presented, it's a trial with upadacitinib that have also shown a superiority to adalimumab on the top of methotrexate in the same population of patients with inadequate response to methotrexate. Here, a primary endpoint, at, uh, which is ACR50 response by week 12, showing a superiority of uh, upadacitinib 15 mg per day versus placebo in dark blue and adalimumab in light blue. Similar uh, data was observed for the state of uh, DAS28 CRP lower or equal to 3.2, that is usually considered as low disease activity. Moving to another issue that is important for uh, JAK inhibitor and mainly for baricitinib is the effect on pain. And here you can see the change of absolute pain on improvement on the uh, left, where uh, baricitinib 4 mg per day was superior to placebo and superior also to adalimumab on the top of MTX. The percentage improvement from baseline was also significantly in favor of baricitinib with an uh, inhibition of 50%, but also of 70% of the pain, uh, of baseline pain. Now, an interesting issue was to look at all the patients where, that were on remission or at least low disease activity. And you have on the, the left the, the effect on the pain in this population, remission left and uh, LDA on the right on pain. And you can see once again, despite all the, uh, the arm of the patient in the different arm where in remission or low disease activity, the effect of pain was superior on the baricitinib group compared to placebo and adalimumab. We have similar data when looking at the function evaluated by the HAC disability index on the um, right hand side of the slide. So in conclusion, JAK inhibitors have shown superiority for some endpoint versus TNF inhibitors. Baracitinib and also upadacitinib show a stronger, more rapid and sustained pain reduction than TNF inhibition. Baracitinib leads to a more pronounced pain reduction and increased function in patients with low disease activity or remission VST TNF inhibition as shown by Yadalumimab. The various available JAK inhibitors have difference with regard to available doses, metabolism and drug-drug interaction this might influence the choice for a specific JAK inhibitor. As opposed to also JAK inhibitors, baricitinib is available as four milligrams per day or two milligrams once daily tablet. It has been shown that the majority of patients maintain low disease or remission after reducing the dose from four milligrams to two milligrams and can recapture these states if they are lost. Now, the last presentation was proposed by Professor Thorsten Witte from Germany. He discussed about growing up new evidence from the real world. First of all, he showed the, um, the, the discontinuation of a drug, uh, the discontinuation rate of the different drug, TNF inhibitors, baricitinib in red, and um, biologics demand with other modes of action. In unadjusted drug maintenance was significantly shorter in the TNF inhibitor compared to the baricitinib. And after adjustment for potential conflicting factors, the hazard of TNF inhibitor discontinuation remained higher than for baricitinib. A similar trend was observed with uh, other mode of action, biologic GMAT. I forget to, to, to tell you that this data comes from the Swiss registry. So another study was shown during the uh, virtual uh, EULA meetings in June. The uh, group for Erlangen in Germany looked at the remission rate 
and low disease activity rate in patients with ARA treated in real life with baricitinib. And surprisingly, the, the remission rate and the low disease activity uh, rate were very high, since 50% uh, of the patients achieve a remission uh, state uh, during the follow-up, and almost 90% were in uh, low disease activity. So in summary and conclusion from the real life data, the real world evidence confirms clinical trial data of JAK inhibitors. The patient population treated with JAK inhibitor may vary between countries. I didn't show you the slide, but it's, uh, it's a reality. In a large proportion of patients, JAK inhibitors are used as monotherapy, almost 50% and sometimes more in some countries. JAK inhibitors show a high drug survival probability and baricitinib demonstrated a significantly higher drug maintenance than TNF inhibitor, while similar trend was observed in comparison to drugs with another mode of action. So the discussion was very uh, important in this symposium and uh, the conclusion of, from the symposium presentation I can summarize by the selectivity of JAK inhibitors is relative and dose dependent. The current data indicates that pan-JAK inhibitors and moderately selective JAK inhibitors are comparably effective in rheumatoid arthritis patients and have a similar safety profile. JAK inhibitors have shown superiority for some endpoints versus TNF inhibitors. Baricitinib leads to a more pronounced pain reduction and increased function in patients with low disease activity or remission versus TNF inhibition. And real-world evidence confirm clinical trials data on JAK inhibitors. Thank you for your attention.